Good evening, everyone. My name is Tom Yantis. I'm assistant city manager for the city of Taylor. We're going to just uh, give everybody a few minutes here to get logged in. We've still got a few joining as we um, speak. And so once uh, folks are in the meeting, then we'll get started. All right, I think everybody from the waiting room has now joined uh, the meeting, so I would like to ask Mayor Brent Rydell to give a um, opening statement and welcome to the meeting. Well, thank you, Tom. I want to thank all of y'all for your attendance here this evening, your involvement in the comprehensive planning process. I've said over and over again when we've had these get-togethers, either uh, virtual or in-person, this is among the most critical things that we've embarked upon in the city of Taylor in, in quite some time. And to bear testament to that, as you might imagine, I'm being contacted by lots of uh, developers as of late who are expressing keen interest in Taylor. And you know, as recently as yesterday, I met with a group and their threshold question is, what is your vision for Taylor's future in terms of growth and development? And I was able to say, well, it's not important what my personal vision is because We've actually documented what the community's vision is uh, in, in our comprehensive plan. And to this group's credit, they had already brought copies of that plan and had dog-eared it and tabbed it and highlighted and were uh, becoming conversant in, in the city of Taylor and our vision for our, our future. Now, we adopted the comprehensive plan, I believe, November 18th. Is that right, Tom? And uh, about a week later, the, the world changed for Taylor, and which is one of the reasons why we're back here again discussing the comprehensive plan and, and uh, elements associated with it here in this new era for the city of Taylor. So this is still remains uh, the most critically important thing that we've done in Taylor in terms of embark upon this plan, because this, uh, this vision is really going to guide and provide the direction for what Taylor of the future is going to be. And we want that to be consistent with what we've heard from the community and as this conversation uh, evolves. So with that, Tom, I'll turn it back over to you and I'm very much looking forward to uh, tonight's discussion. Thank you, Mayor. Um, yeah, as, as the mayor mentioned, um, we were um, all very excited on November the 23rd that we got the announcement that Samsung had chosen Taylor as the site for its new uh, semiconductor manufacturing facility. And then we also knew that uh, we immediately needed to look at our plans that we had just adopted to see the impact of uh, the Samsung facility on those plans and make adjustments as necessary. So the city re-engaged our consultants with Lionheart Places, and tonight we have with us Abby Gilfillan and Rebecca Leonard from Lionheart, and they're going to walk us through um, a presentation and a um, interactive process to get community feedback on the types of things that we need to make adjustments to in the comprehensive plan to make sure that we've fully accounted for the impacts of the Samsung facility. So I'd like to turn it over to Abby Gilfillan, and she's going to... Um, uh, share her screen with a presentation and an agenda for the uh, presentation tonight. Abby, you're muted. There, there we go. go. Okay. Hi, everybody. So Abby Gilfone with Lionheart. Um, thank you, Tom and Mayor Rydell uh, for that introduction. Um, what we want to do is we've got about a 30 minute presentation here and we'd like to leave some time at the end for some feedback um, and discussion as well. I um, wanted to start off with just uh, talking a little bit about the Envision Taylor comprehensive plan process that we, that the uh, mayor and Tom just talked about. Um, that process started in fall of 2020. Uh, we had a, a little delay in there as it started right, um, right around the time, uh, or actually, I guess we, we hit COVID right in that time. So we had a little bit of a delay. Um, we started back up and we finished that in uh, November 
of 2021. During that process, there was an extensive public outreach process. We had, um, we had an advisory committee. Uh, there's a lot of members of that committee that I see here, uh, which is great. Um, and they followed that process all the way through from the beginning to the end. We had three public workshops. Um, first, we set the vision and the goals uh, for the plan with the community. Next, we looked at some different alternatives for how the community could grow um, and selected one. So that was our preferred path. And then finally, we talked about implementation. Uh, there was an interactive website and there were also seven additional community meetings and presentations throughout the process. Uh, so it was an extensive process to create this plan. Um, these are the big ideas that came out of that plan. Um, community character, so maintaining Taylor's small town atmosphere, inclusive growth, to be intentional and thoughtful about ensuring that all people and communities benefit from growth as it happens. Diverse housing, to ensure that housing accommodates all ages, abilities, household types, and incomes. Fiscal sustainability and infrastructure. Make smart investments that maximize the use of the existing infrastructure and provide sufficient resources for long-term maintenance, repairs, and replacement. And then finally, economic resilience. So supporting and promoting unique and local businesses. The plan was adopted November 18th, and um, just five days later, on November 23rd, was the announcement for Samsung. And so that's why we're here to do this update. Um, this is a, it's not, this is a, a short time frame. Uh, so we are in this month of February, uh, we are really working on um, gathering input, um, and really trying to understand the impact better from community members, as well as we had some focus group meetings, we had advisory meeting, um, a, a meeting of the advisory committee. We're gonna summarize all of this input um, and uh, make that available for people to review. Uh, we'll also have a check-in with the city council on March 10th, uh, where we look at, you know, how, uh, where we present sort of the feedback that we heard and, um, start to talk about a path forward uh, for amending the plan. Uh, we'll have, we'll get in and make those amendments to the plan. We'll have a full draft plan for the, for folks to view um, uh, towards the end of March on the 25th and then move into approval meetings. So this update will need to be approved by, uh, there'll be a recommendation at the planning commission um, and approval by city council. So uh, it's a quick turnaround. So, Talking, this is what this is the question that we're asking with this update is how does um, Samsung really impact this Envision Taylor comprehensive plan? Um, and one of the things that we talked about, and this is something that the advisory committee really, uh, during our advisory committee meeting, we really um, uh, emphasized is the fact that uh, Samsung coming really doesn't change the foundation of the plan. So those big ideas that I presented at the beginning, um, those are consistent. And um, but what we do want to review are we want to look at population um, and jobs projections. We want to look at infrastructure planning, particularly around that site and in that area of the town. Uh, we want to look at land use planning again in that area and then some implementation strategies as well. So uh, are there are there implementation strategies that can be updated um, or new ones that may be added um, that are uh, more specific to that area of town and the incorporation of Samsung. So why Samsung selected Taylor? The Taylor is located, um, uh, there's proximate to Samsung's current manufacturing site in Austin. Uh, there's this local semiconductor ecosystem. Um, there's infrastructure stabi stability, available land, local government support, um, and other sort of community development opportunities. Samsung is um, expected to break ground in 2022 and be operational by 2024. It's a $17 billion investment, 2,000 high-tech jobs, and thousands of related jobs within the region are expected as a result. So I talked about before, really, these are the four things out of the comprehensive plan that we're really wanting to take a look at through this process. Population assumption, uh, which we'll talk about later, um, infrastructure, land use, and those implementation elements. So one of the first things we wanted to do is um, when we're 
trying to look at how will Samsung impact our uh, tailor. How, we wanted to look at uh, the impact of some other large uh, manufacturing plants in smaller communities, uh, similar to geographically similar uh, to Taylor. And um, so the first thing we looked at though, which we think is important is the Samsung site in Austin and when that was uh, built. So uh, Samsung was built in Austin in 1997. Uh, at that time, the population of Austin was 567,000. Um, today, 2019, it's nearly doubled uh, to 950,000 people. Um, the distance from that Samsung plant to downtown Austin is nine miles, um, and the distance to Taylor is about 19 miles. The Samsung plant uh, has about 3,000 plus employees. Uh, it takes up 600 acres. Um, the area that's occupied on the site there is about 180 acres. The building itself is 2.45 miles squared. Uh, so these buildings are measured in miles squared uh, as opposed to square feet. They're very large. Um, some of the community benefits um, and some of the, the um, impact that Samson ha has on the community there um, is that uh, employees receive 16 hours of volunteer time off, which is spent uh, within the community. These are just a few things. Uh, there are a lot of things that Samsung does, but we wanted to highlight a few. Um, there are philanthropic dollars invested in um, job awareness and readiness in STEM industries, um, and then also um, contributions through matching funds uh, with employees. This is the site of Samsung in 2002 in, in Austin. This was five years after construction. Um, so this is where our first uh, good aerials are available. This is some of the, I'm just gonna go through these pretty quickly. This is sort of just a history of the development that's happened around several of these sites, um, highlighting the types of land uses um, that are built. And so um, here you see some of the first, first development there um, is some single family adjacent and a little bit of commercial up on the corner there. Uh, that single family really continues. Um, see a little bit of industrial added, uh, more single family. This is about 20 years after construction. So this is in 2017. Uh, Samsung has expanded during this time as well to add more, um, more area to the manufacturing plant. Um, and then there's some multifamily um, and some additional commercial and um, uh, schools in the area. So this is a before and after the, the type of development that was around that site. The next one we took a look at is the Toyota man Motor Manufacturing Plant. This one um, was in the city of Georgetown, Kentucky. Um, it is located about 15 miles from Lexington as that ma major population center. Um, in 1986, which is when the plant was built, the population there was 11,000. Um, in 2019, 33,000. Uh, there are 10,000 employees at the site, so that's a lot more uh, than it's being proposed at Samsung. The area of the site is 1,300 acres, um, and the building is 8.1 miles, miles squared. Um, that Toyota provides a lot of uh, community benefits in the, in, uh, in the Georgetown area, as well as um, the state. Um, and here are some of those slides. This is, this is a, again, we, we couldn't get back quite uh, back far enough um, with aerial, historical aer aerials, but this is about 12 years after construction. Um, you can see the plant that's over there in the in the uh, bottom right. And this is uh, uh, just five years later in um, 2000, you can see a lot of development going on. So both um, single family, all, all, all types, single family, uh, residential, commercial, uh, a little industrial expansion of the plant um, and some education. There are also new roads built. Um, and, and that continues over time. This is about 30 years out and it starts to level off. So this is a before and after. And then the last one we took a look at was Intel Core, uh, which is a semiconductor manufacturing plant as well. Um, and it's located in Chandler, Arizona. Uh, 
this area of uh, Arizona, the Phoenix area, really, really blew up uh, during this time frame. The Intel Core was built in 1980, um, and the Chandler at that time had 29,000 people. And in 2019, uh, that population went up to 252,000. Um, again, this this is a, a product of that whole Phoenix area really um, expanding in population during that time. Uh, it's uh, Chandler is also located about 17 miles from that major population center. Um, and Tempe about, about 12 miles from Tempe. Uh, Intel Core uh, has 12,000 employees. They started with 2,500. Uh, they cover 700 acres um, and uh, they provide uh, community benefits and uh, disaster recover recovery. They've, they've uh, put a lot towards COVID-19 relief efforts recently um, and also invest in STEM education and research uh, within the Arizona area, within the state of Arizona. So this is the area um, in 1997. So this is, again, 17 years after construction um, of the plant. Um, you can see here uh, some large freeway and highway development happened, um, which uh, really facilitated a lot more industrial development in the area, um, uh, particularly around those, those freeways. Private airport cropped up during this time. Um, and there's significant single family growth as well. Things start leveling off about 30 years um, after, or filling in um, 30 years after construction here, um, but, but still um, a lot of industrial uh, growth in this area. And this is the most current, so it's about 42 years after construction. And that's the uh, overall before and after. So you can see this area particularly uh, was able to, to see a lot, uh, Chandler area saw a lot of uh, more industrial type growth uh, as a result. All right, so getting back to the goals of uh, this process and tonight, um, what we really wanna do is, um, you know, first understand that you know, the foundations of this plan does not change those big ideas, really to take those big ideas um, and the foundation of the comprehensive plan in Vision Taylor um, and talk about how Samsung coming in, uh, using those same big ideas uh, can impact some of these things like uh, infrastructure, land use and implementation. Um, so the first thing I wanted to hit are some of the population assumptions. You heard both the mayor and Tom talk about a lot of people coming in and asking what's gonna happen, what's gonna go on um, in Taylor uh, as a result of this. Uh, one thing that um, I, I think that is important to point out is that our population projections, so those are the projections that go into uh, the Envision Taylor Comprehensive Plan. Uh, we use the most aggressive uh, type of population projection methodology um, and the most aggressive uh, projection. So typically in doing population projections, you can look at um, uh, you know, the trends over time. So essentially you would look at what's been going on in Taylor um, over time and continue to project that out. Um, so those are um, some, some of the more uh, traditional methodologies for population uh, projection. But in uh, smaller communities located next to large uh, regional areas, a lot of Taylor's population projections um, into the future are really based on this region um, and the growth in the region. And so that was the reason that we selected, that we utilized Campos projection models for the city of Taylor um, as the basis for this plan. And uh, so with those projections, uh, we are projecting that Taylor goes from, the Envision Taylor Comprehensive Plan projects that Taylor goes from 16,200 um, in 2020 to about 39,552 people in 2040. Uh, so that is a large population um, increase. And these projections sort of form the basis then of some of the land use planning that goes on. So we know uh, once you start to get an idea or a target of how many people may be coming to the region, um, you start to look at uh, uh, where will they go and what is the land use for those areas. 
little bit more about the Campo 2045 plan is that it really does take this regional approach. Um, so uh, Campo is a uh, six county area and a big part of Campo's growth models is based on jobs and job growth. Um, so Campo growth, the Campo 2045 plan, um, they really look at this jobs housing balance of about one job uh, to two people or a 0.5 balance. Um, in the, the way that the Campo 2045 plan is they have this big uh, model that's called an urban SIM model. Um, and they uh, plug a lot of different assumptions into that model. And the model continually gets updated um, and improved as time goes on. So in Williamson County, uh, the projected job growth is about 177% um, over a, this is over a, uh, that period. And so they, um, they go from 233,000 jobs in the area to 20 to 642,000 jobs. Um, and so the first step is you identify, you know, how many jobs are going to that county and to that area. And then what the model does is it starts to allocate those jobs to certain areas like Taylor, um, and other areas. And I can show you here, this is the city of Taylor. Uh, yep, Taylor is right here in this, in this map. And here's Taylor in these maps. So a significant amount of jobs was allocated through this urban sim model to Taylor. Um, uh, you can see here it's you know, over 2,400 and, and, and these are in several different, these are called TAZs. They're in several different um, areas. So a significant amount of jobs were allocated to the city of Taylor and a significant amount of population growth. So those formed the basis um, for our plans. The other thing that I would say is that uh, Campo updates these projections and models on a five-year basis. So um, they are just getting ready to go into an update process uh, for the next plan, which would be the 2050 plan. Um, it won't be totally ready for another few years, but they are uh, going in and starting to look at uh, all of the job growth that's going on along the east side um, of, of um, I-35 and up into Taylor with Samsung. And so they're starting to look at those projections. All right, the next thing uh, that I wanted to cover was uh, infrastructure. So in order to support the Samsung plant, there is proposed some new water and wastewater infrastructure to this side of town um, and uh, in this area. Uh, this is an area that did not have access to water or wastewater service in the past. So these are, uh, so this is new service. The next thing to look at is transportation services and access. Um, and so there are several planned roads and realignments of um, other planned roads in order to support the Samsung facility uh, in this area. And those will impact uh, the transportation plan that is part of the city of Taylor, Envision Taylor comprehensive plan. So uh, that's one of the things that will be updated as part of this process is to account for those new roads um, and, um, and realignment of some of the other roads on that map. I talked before about one of the big ideas for Envision Taylor, which was um, fiscal sustainability um, and infrastructure. And so with that big idea uh, really came this uh, idea of growth sectors so that Taylor would identify where are the areas that currently have access to water and wastewater um, and transportation services. And those are the areas that should be, that growth should be directed. Um, as opposed to directing, uh, you know, having growth happen in areas where there is no water or wastewater and running that out to those areas. Um, and that's, that comes from that big idea of fiscal sustainability. Um, and so in doing that, we, we developed what was called, this is sort of the first step to developing a land use plan, was to first identify the where. Uh, so where would those additional um, development happen? And then the next step was to start to talk about what type of land uses would go there. So in developing that, there's this growth sector map that has three different uh, main categories for growth. It's G1, which is a restricted growth sector. 
These are the areas and you'll on the map that you'll see on the next slide that are light pink in color. These are areas where there is not infrastructure available. And so, um, and, and it's also not even, you know, close by, not something that could be tapped into. It would need to be brought out. Uh, the next one is a controlled growth sector. So this is areas where um, there is some proximity to planned thoroughfares um, or planned, um, planned infrastructure. Um, it may not exist now, but it's, it's close to um, infrastructure that is in place um, or planned growth in the future. Um, and then the last one is the intended growth sector. So these are the areas where um, uh, infrastructure is available and close by. Um, and these are the areas where um, the growth policies uh, in the comprehensive plan really encourage development or redevelopment of these areas um, as compact mixed use uh, residential places. So this is that map. Um, one of the areas that we've really been uh, talking with folks and looking at as part of these focus group meetings is this area uh, right here because of the access to water and wastewater. So this area between 79 and the Samsung site, um, that area right now is, um, is in a restricted growth, growth sector. Um, but as infrastructure is expanded there, um, that's, that's uh, a, a place that, that this project is gonna take a look at. What's it, what, what is appropriate from a, a first from changing this growth sector map uh, to recognizing that infrastructure there. Um, and then next to talk about the land use uh, that goes within that area. So we have um, in the comprehensive plan, uh, employment centers as one of the land use types. Uh, that's a, a natural fit for the Samsung site itself. Um, but one of the things we wanna talk about is uh, what, what, uh, what does that look like? Is it a different type of employment center? Um, and what does it look like around uh, the Samsung site as well? So uh, those are some of the things we've been talking about. Uh, employment centers, they are uh, primarily for reserved for industrial uses, but there is some mix of uses um, allowed within those employment centers as well. So things like uh, retail, office, um, and other sort of mixed use buildings that may incorporate uh, even residential on, on upper floors or things like that. So, um, this is the area here in this box um, that I talked about before, uh, where we really are looking at uh, uh, for, for the existing land uses and to identify um, how those might change. There's currently um, about 1,700 uh, acres that are, that are um, identified as, as employment centers in the current land use plan. These are the types of buildings in Taylor. Uh, that are and surrounding uh, that are part of typically part of an employment center. Um, there are different scales to employment centers. Um, anything for, uh, there are you know small, more neighborhood type type scale scales um, as well as as you get to a larger site that brings in people from further away. Uh, you get up to that regional level um, or scale of an employment center. And then the last thing uh, we wanted to talk about was implementation. These are some of the policy statements that we pulled um, out of the plan uh, to give you an idea of the policy statements that are in the plan um, and also how these uh, sort of apply to some of the decisions that, uh, that the community will be making around land use in that area. So uh, some of the land use related policy statements are to promote development patterns that maximize the use of existing infrastructure and land before expanding infrastructure to undeveloped areas. New development should generate sufficient revenue to support the long-term cost of maintaining the infrastructure that serves it. Development and infrastructure decisions and regulations should result in an increase in population density and revenue per acre. To link investments in infrastructure to the revenue that's generated from that adjacent development and to um, that economic development incentives should support the downtown and future mixed use centers. And then um, along with those policy statements, some of the implementation strategies um, uh, that we've uh, talked about uh, along this uh, through this process and that we'd like to hear more 
uh, from, from you all on is uh, leveraging some of the value um, and are there strategies that the city of Taylor can use to leverage some of the value um, that uh, from the Samsung site going here uh, that could be used in other areas, uh, for example, like downtown or, or other areas of the city. Um, considering uh, a small area plan or a sub area plan for this area of the city, uh, whether that's a you know, economic development related plan, a land use plan, but some, doing some further planning of this area as Samsung comes in. Reserving um, some land around that for other large employers uh, to support Samsung. And then the other thing is to uh, consider really reassessing these population projections with the Campo 25 plan projections, when it, 2050 uh, plan projections when it comes out. Uh, so continuing to, to stay on top of that and continuing to monitor that um, as time goes on. And so with that, um, our next steps on this project uh, are really to, um, uh, we'll, be, to, we'll be taking all of this feedback in, we'll be drafting a memo to the city council, uh, which will go on March 10th. Um, and then, uh, as I said, drafting those, those updates and moving forward to the planning commission and city council. Um, yep. So with that, I uh, think we, we uh, wanted to open it up. We have a pretty big group, which is great tonight. Uh, let's see, I can't see my screen. You want to stop your screen sharing, uh, Abby, yes. so we can see everybody? Yes. There we go. All right, great. So I think uh, we have a pretty big group. Uh, what we'd like to do is if uh, you would could. Um, raise your hand. Some of the things that we'd like to, to hear about and some of the questions that we have um, are about land uses in that, that area of the, of the city. Also, if anybody wants to, um, doesn't want to raise their hand, but wants to submit um, a comment or a question in the chat, you can do that too, and that'll be recorded as part of the meeting. Uh, oh, no. Okay, so I think um, we have Lisa, is that you? Yes, Lisa's got her hand raised. You have to, there. Okay, so I'm noticing that you are looking at um, employment centers and, and they look like they're east of my neighborhood, which right now I think is out in the country, but it's on the far east side of kind of northeast Taylor. And I'm just wondering, like, how does that work? Employment centers being like outside the, the residential area and so far over. So I think the areas that you're referring to are adjacent to the railroad. That's um, in the existing plan that's already been adopted. And those areas were designated as areas for uh, th that would not be compatible with residential development because of their proximity to the railroad line. So that's what that's why that strip along the railroad track was designated that way. Right, right, right. Okay, thanks. Sure. Okay, let's see. There's a comment uh, from Richard that says, what is current thinking about land use in that area around Samsung? Certainly there have already been discussions about this. And then um, another comment that came in says that do the employment centers include healthcare services? And uh, yes, a healthcare land use would be appropriate in the employment center category. Um, and then I guess to answer Richard's question, that's part of what we're trying to get feedback on from, from the community there. Uh, we did have conversations with our focus groups as well as with the advisory committee about what the appropriate land uses are in the area around Samsung. Um, and one of the things that we did receive feedback from Samsung specifically about, and this is sort of part of what they learned from their experience in Austin, is that they would like there to be additional land area outside of the property that they own that is reserved for other industrial type land uses that would be compatible with them. 
Um, and so, uh, you know, their recommendation to the city is consider that as we think about, you know, a, amending the land use plan to make sure that there are some additional lands outside of the, their property that would be able to be landing places for other similar uh, businesses or support services that would provide uh, services and support to the Samsung facility. So another comment that came in uh, that says, I'd like to ask about transportation plans, in particular, the Project Connect light rail project. Is there or could there be a discussion Discussion opened about lobbying for a commuter train to come to Taylor like Leander has. That's a great question. Um, that is something that I think would be a, a, a long term strategy, as um, I'm sure you're aware, the city of Taylor is not within the service area of Capital Metro, which actually is the entity that provides the um, commuter rail service in Austin. Um, it's something that I think in the Campo plans, which is the Capital Area Metropolitan Planning Organization, they facilitate the long range transportation planning for the region. Uh, that would have to be something that is in, in their long range planning uh, for there to be uh, a way to finance that type of infrastructure. But I think it's a great thought. Okay, this is y'all's chance to talk and, and, and give us feedback. So feel free to, um, you know, I think as, as Abby mentioned, you know, the, the things that we're looking at as part of this amendment to the comprehensive plan are going to be what changes do we need to make to the land use plan, the growth sectors plan, the transportation plan, and, um, and any of the implementation strategies. Uh, we know that we're going to, you know, for instance, make adjustments to uh, the transportation network because where we had roads shown on the transportation plan, now our, the Samsung plant is going to sit on top of that. So we've got to make some adjustments to the alignment of those roads. And then the other thing that we know is that because we're going to build some additional utility infrastructure out there, there may be the opportunity to help facilitate some additional uh, uh, ancillary development in that area. So, so those... We want to, you know, ask the question: What does the community think um, that additional infrastructure should be uh, used for? You know, because a lot of the requests for uh, service are coming from uh, residential development, and uh, you know, is that the appropriate use, or do we want to reserve that for future employment type uses? Those are some of the questions that we'll have to answer as a part of this uh, update process. There's a few more comments that came in the uh, the chat that I'll read. Uh, one says, I'm with Tess. Are you saying that transportation is up to the Campo plan? Um, so I was just mentioning the issue related to transit service. That's not something that the city of Taylor can achieve on its own. And so we would be dependent upon um, regional uh, entities helping with the provision of transit services to Taylor. Uh, then there's another question that says, Will more of the farmland and homes around the Samsung site, including south of it along 973, be purchased for other industrial sites? And how soon would that happen? Uh, that's a great question. Um, I think that, you know, obviously the city doesn't control the um, sale of properties, but what we can influence is whether um, those areas are designated on our plan for additional industrial and, and uh, employment type land uses. Um, so those areas that start to get south of, on 973 are really outside the city's utility service area. And so they probably would not be um, part of our planning for additional growth. Really, we're more uh, focused on the stuff that we can provide water and sewer service to. And that's going to be things between Samsung and Highway 79 and north of Highway 79. Another question that came in from Richard says, so focusing on that region, it appears the best use is industrial commercial rather than more residential housing. Any other comments uh, related to that? Uh, Laura says, can the city be proactive about a transportation plan given that systems like Project Connect is outside of the Cap Metro region? I think we can be proactive, certainly within um, the areas that we control uh, transportation planning for, which is primarily inside the city limits and ETJ, 
We have been working with Williamson County and TxDOT as well to ensure that um, there are proper plans in place for the expansion of the infrastructure necessary to address the increase in um, uh, transportation demand from the Samsung facility. So that's in the planning stage right now. As it relates to the longer range plans, the city does participate in, uh, in the Campo planning process. And, and now that we know that Samsung is going to be in Taylor and the effect that that's going to have, um, that will become a part of Campo's 2050 planning process. And like Abby said, they already had um, planned for there to be significant employment growth in and around Taylor. Um, and so this will just give them more specific data about where that's going to be located so that they can help uh, guide uh, transportation funding decisions. All right. I think that's everybody that's been in the chat. Feel free to continue to provide any comments or questions and uh, or ask them out loud. Jeff, you look like you have a question. <laughs> so Abby, um, I know you went through the process uh, that are the next steps really where uh, We'll be summarizing the feedback, feedback that we get from the community and taking that to the council to uh, uh, basically summarize what we believe the units of the plan are. How can people get involved uh, as we go forward if they you know, have additional uh, comments or thoughts? Yeah, that's great. Am I, no, I'm not a um, Yeah, that's great, Tom. I, I think it would be best if um, people uh, can can send uh, send you an email and and uh, uh, and get that get that over to us. Um, you know, to put my, yeah, I'll put my email in the chat so that y'all can um, anybody that has a comment or a question can um, send that send me an email and I'll get you an answer. Yeah, and, and like I said, in terms of feedback loops, um, we will have this summary that will go to the city council on March 10th. Uh, so that's a public hearing, uh, or a, it's a time for a public meeting uh, where you can uh, uh, you know, see that summary and, and also speak um, there for citizen comment. And then it will go back to a public hearing process in April as well with the planning commission um, and, the, uh, and the city council um, and both the summary, so the summary will be printed and, and uh, available for everybody to look at and comment on, um, and then the, uh, the full draft as well. Great. Thanks, Abby. Another question just came in that can they get a copy of the presentation? And yes, mm -hmm. we will have um, both the recording of this meeting as well as a copy of the presentation will be available on the city's website. Uh, so feel free to uh, there's a link on the homepage of the city's website to the Envision Taylor comprehensive plan. So we'll have information related to the amendment process uh, available via that link. And if you can't find it, feel free to give me a call or send me an email. All right, well, we're happy to give people more of their evening back that they can go do other things with, but uh, we don't want to rush either. So if there are any other thoughts or comments that you want to make sure that are made during this process, uh, please feel free to uh, speak up or send another message in the chat. We'll wait a, a minute or two here before we wrap things up. Mayor, would you like to say any parting thoughts to, to everyone? That I just want to thank everybody for their involvement in this process and for being uh, on this Zoom meeting this evening. Uh, I do want to recognize or miss earlier in my opening comments from recognizing a couple of council members who are joining us here uh, on Zoom this evening. We have council member Dwayne Areola and council member Mitch Drummond, who are, are sitting in and listening in on this. Uh, again, that speaks to how critical this whole process is and how important it is to the future of our community and your involvement in this is essential and we really appreciate you taking time to be involved in this. Thank you, Mayor. 
All right. Well, with that, we really do appreciate everybody being here. And again, as you think of things or, or have additional questions or concerns, please feel free to reach out and attend the city council meetings and planning commission meetings as we move through this process of updating the plan to take into consideration the really good news that we've got this major employer coming to town. We're, we're all excited about the, the future and, and uh, look forward to sharing it with you. So uh, we will log off for now and uh, we'll see you guys at the next meeting.